Welcome everyone. Tonight we are gathered on land that sits on treaty land that is steeped in rich indigenous history and is the present day home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit people. We acknowledge that we live and work on land covered under the Williams treaties and the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation. We acknowledge this land out of respect for the many Indigenous nations who have cared for the lands and waters from the beginning of time and still do so today. We extend our gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity to live and work on this territory. We are committed to understanding the truth of our shared history, confronting our past and present, and building a better future together in true reconciliation. Thank you, Erica. Next, I'd like to introduce Angela Todd Anderson, president of the Congress of Black Women Whitby. She'll be doing her ancestral acknowledgement. acknowledgement. Please welcome Angela. <laughs> welcome everyone. I paid them. <laughs> I'll be reading the African Ancestral Acknowledgement. We acknowledge our African ancestors, many of whom were forcibly displaced and exploited in the transatlantic slave trade and whose stolen labor was the basis for a significant proportion of our society's current wealth. Descendants and generations of our ancestors continue to be impacted by the remnants of slavery and colonialism to this day in the form of systemic and individual racism. We acknowledge the histories and atrocities hidden and erased that we may never come to know, yet continue to affect our daily lives. We acknowledge the tedious, painful labor of individuals in the past committed to addressing racism and to those who now continue to do the essential and generative work of pushing us closer to eliminating racism. To them, we are forever indebted. Thank you. All right. So as I said, we have some dignitaries in the house today. And don't worry, 
they don't all get to speak. But we do want to acknowledge them for their efforts in coming out tonight and their interest in celebrating black history with us. So if I miss anybody, I apologize. I was trying to walk around and make sure I caught everyone. I do want to acknowledge that the mayor of the city of Oshawa, Dan Carter, is in the house back there, please. The mayor of the town of Ajax is in the back, Mr. Sean Collier. And the mayor of the municipality of Clarington, Adrian Foster, over there. We are also joined by regional councillors Marilyn Crawford, Granville Anderson, and Bob Chapman. As well as councillors Nikki Lundquist and Nancy Henry. Thank you. And I apologize again if I missed anyone. My Rotary people are in the house. Big up yourselves back there. We're joined by the Chief Administrative Officer of the Durham Regional Police, Stan McClellan, back there. I shouldn't have started that. I shouldn't have started. I'm, I'm going to stop now. All right. So now, to bring official greetings, first I'm going to bring up the Member of Provincial Parliament for the Town of Ajax, Ms. Patrice Barnes. Hi, good evening everyone. I'm going to lower this just a little bit. You know, every time I get to hear the Black National Anthem, it just chokes me up, you know? Not just that I can't sing it, because you know, but just the words and what it means and the journey. And you know, I feel it in my heart, the, those lifting our voices and sing, the challenges and struggle, but it tells us so much about us. It tells us about our resilience. It tells us about our strength. It tells us about our determination not to be eradicated. And I think looking back at our history, we realize that it's the strongest of us that now stands. It's like, you know, when you, you look out in nature and you lose the, the weakest ones. Our genes are strong. And we stand here today with purpose and pride and determination to continue to carve out the place that belongs to us, carve out our reality, carve out our dignity, and continue to stand with pride. And things happen and it hurts. It hurts so bad. It makes us cry, it makes us understand, and it makes us say why. But we know we continue to persevere on, we continue to lift our voices, we continue to sing, and that joy that is in us is the envy of so many others, the joy that keeps us standing, the joy that keeps us strong. And I go to places and now I see us because we stand, we stand and we embrace who we are. Our hair is nappy, our wraps are strong, our outfits are what we want to be. We sing and we dance and we be strong because it is who we are. And we have been here in Durham since, I'm going to make sure, since the 1850s. And still here we remain, stronger and growing. And so I want to thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for the dignitaries in the room. Thank you for the people that don't look like us, but continue to realize that the importance is standing together and recognizing that we cannot do it alone, but we need to do it with everybody. So thank you for, so much for be, the opportunity to be here tonight, and I congratulate the region for recognizing that this is an important time that we must celebrate, we must acknowledge, and we must continue to grow and rise. Have a great evening. All right, next up, we have the CEO and Chair of the Region of Durham, Mr. John Henry. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, excuse me, good evening. Now, you know, one of the great things uh, about uh, being Chair of the Region is you get to meet some amazing people. And about 12 years ago, in my first event, that I went to as I was elected took place at the Club Caribe and it was hosted by the Canadian, uh, the Canadian Jamaican Club. And they taught me that you could describe everything in the world by two words, really and wow. So I'm really excited to be here and wow, look at this crowd. 
And MP Barnes, thank, MPP Barnes, thank you for being here tonight. And I would like to, to recognize just a couple more people. We have our CAO of the region of Durham here tonight, Elaine Baxter Taher, and our, our Commissioner of Health and Social Service, Stella Danis Papakonstino, are here. And uh, before, before I start with some remarks, this event took a lot of work. It took a lot of time, a lot of volunteers, a lot of sponsors, a lot of organization, including the help of the people that work in this gallery. Give them a round of applause so they know that they're appreciated. And it is an honor for me to be here tonight uh, to welcome you together to We Rise Durham, Excellence Through the Arts. Art has always been a way of connecting people. It brings us together. It shares experiences. It opens our eyes to new ideas, and most importantly, inspiring us to live in our, our own lives. This evening will showcase black excellence through the arts, displaying talent from local artists and engaging us in the discussion to celebrate Canada's black communities. We'll hear from some wonderful speakers, including Cameron Bailey, the Chief Executive Officer, co-head and artistic director of the Toronto International Film Festival. Give him a round of applause. I also again would like to thank the Robert McLaughlin Gallery for hosting us this evening, as well as our partners, Durham Regional Police, the City of Pickering, the Municipality of Clarington, the Canadian Jamaican Club of Oshawa, the Power to Be International, Congress of Black Women, Oshawa Whippy Champer, chapter and Durham One Net for organizing this amazing event. I'm very proud to see the artistic displays of black Canadian artists on display here tonight and we celebrate their achievements not only through the month of February but all year round. Throughout our nation's history black Canadians have contributed significantly to making Canada the cultural diverse and prosperous country it is today and across this region there are many black Canadians doing amazing and impactful work every day. We are grateful to the many black community members who have chosen to call Durham region their home. A key piece of making Durham the great place that it is to live, work and play. We stand by the promise we have made to continue to grow in diversity and ensuring that tomorrow's Durham is even more inclusive, di more dynamic and safe for all. We honor those who have built a legacy of freedom and have taught us the, that equity should be the center of our work and to end anti-black racism. I encourage everyone to take some time this month to reflect and learn and come together for an enlightening and educational Black History Month. As with past, Black, past Durham Black History Month celebrations, I hope that you enjoy tonight's festivities as you will be entertained, educated, inspired by talented artists, speakers and others to set the tone for an inspirational, enlightening Black History Month. Now, I'd like to introduce Deputy Chief Dean Bertram for the Durham Regional Police Service to say a few words. Actually, uh, Deputy Chief Bertram got called away on a bit of a family emergency, so actually, at the last minute, we have uh, Deputy Chief Joe Majorano from Durham Regional Police Service who's going to bring a few words. Pardon me, duty called, and uh, I was taken away for a moment there. I'm truly humbled to be here this evening, and uh, prior to starting, I'd like to acknowledge uh, some of our board members that are here this evening. Our board chair, uh, Mayor Shane Collier from uh, Town of Ajax. <laughs> Councillor Wu from Clarington. And Mayor Dan Carter, who just had to step outside, we're dealing with the matter, uh, from the City of Oshawa. Thank you very much. Now the formal part. Elected officials, members of Regional Council, distinguished guests and members of the community, welcome to the celebration of Black History Month 2023. I'm Joe Majorano, Deputy Chief of Durham Regional Police Policing Operations, and I send my regrets on behalf of Deputy Chief Dean Bertram, who's tending to a personal matter and is unable to be here this evening. First, a sincere thank you to the Black History Month Committee for organizing and planning this wonderful event. I know a great deal of work has gone on behind the scenes to plan and host this evening. On behalf of the service, Chief Todd Rollauer, and our entire command team, I would like to thank our Equity and Inclusion Unit, 
the staff at the region, and our community members for working together to make this celebration possible. The Durham Regional Police Service has the privilege of partnering with the City of Pickering, Municipality of Clarington, Canadian Jamaican Club of Oshawa, the Power to Be International, Congress of Black Women, Oshawa Whitby, and Durham One to celebrate Black History Month. The Durham Regional Police takes pride in fostering the connections we have with, the community, with community organizations and building new partnerships. In collaboration and action, we invite, pardon me, we unite to make positive and lasting changes for everyone here in Durham. I can say that the Durham Regional Police is committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion and working with all of our partners in the region and throughout our entire communities throughout the province of Ontario and Canada to make us a better service that's more truly representative of the needs of Durham Region. For the month of February, the Durham Regional Police Service will be raising the Pan-African flag at all divisions, including the Operations Training Centre and Regional Headquarters to recognize Black History Month. Black History Month is a time to share and recognize the contributions made by the black community throughout history. Specifically, the role black Canadians and their communities have had shaping Canada's identity. The Durham, yes, I think she wants, well, of course, yes, we, you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. I have a sp soft spot for kids. <laughs> the theme of tonight's celebration is Together We Rise Durham, Excellence Through the Arts, and will highlight black talent through various performances and artistic displays. I would like to thank all of the artists and performers who have joined us in our celebrations tonight. Thank you, and I wish you all the best as we celebrate Black History Month. Thank you, Deputy. I have the pleasure of introducing our next, or first performer of the night, but also want to just say that it is a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, when this first started, we started at the regional building, and to see now that we're occupying a different space to elevate and continue to elevate our community, I think this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful occasion. So be proud, and I'm glad to be here. So I'd like to introduce A. Gregory Frankson, AKA Ridlin, is an educator, activist, consultant, public speaker, and award-winning literary artist. Since 2004, Greg has been featured in numerous audio recordings, video poems, public speeches, articles, and literary journals. He appears in five anthologies, including the award-winning collection, The Great Black North, published four, four poetry collections, Cerebral Stimulation, um, and a cerebral confections, and is the editor of the critically acclaimed African anthology, Perspective of Black Canadian Poets. His debut work of creative nonfiction, Alphabet Soup, will be published by Dundurn, pressed in 2024. Greg is passionately dedicated to living according to his personal mission statement, to present the vision that inspire others to positively change the world. Please help me Intru Welcome, Greg Frankson. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. What's up? Y'all doing okay? Yeah, we're gonna elevate the energy up in this spot by the time I'm done, all right? So that's what we're gonna do in here. Um, I'm very excited and pleased and honored uh, to be able to be here with you today to talk about uh, the black experience in Canada. And I'm gonna share two poems in the process of doing that and just emphasize in the process that the, the most recent census data came out in November, the ethnocultural data came out, and it indicates that there are nearly 70,000 black people in the region of Durham. It is a significant community, it is a large community, a vibrant, multi-ethnic community, and I am very pleased to be a member of that community, and I'm pleased that you're here tonight to celebrate it. So the first poem I'm gonna read is from the book, African Anthology, Perspectives of Black Canadian Poets. Shameless self-plug, I've got copies upstairs, please come and buy one later when you're finished. <laughs> And um, I was, I'm very pleased to have been the editor, but I also contributed an essay and a poem to the collection. So I wanna to read to you the poem that I contributed, which is called The Blackened Room. 
Open the door. Step inside the contours of your fear. Caress the warp in your perception that braids devastation to your cranium, tight like rows of Negro corn as each footfall draws you deeper. Wrap yourself in the blackness like a discomforted comforter too warm that leaves you sweaty, restless, confused, discombobulated equilibrium. Dissolve matter into the ether. Argue spiritedly with the lives you'd meant to live before this. The door groans shut behind you, cuts off all possibility of escape. Bidden by the highest bidder who enslaves you to new terror. Bitter as the sea salt that transported anxiety-addled chattel from foreign sands through the hourglass, you are diminished. Once plucked from indigenous land and cast onto red-soaked soil unfit for your roots. Shrunk down to near enough to nothingness, pulverized in aggregate to be ground down into building blocks of oppressive freedom. Shackled by the petrification of ambition and unfree wills, a testament to the death of one's hope. Newly nested in pathology that holds you fetal, fragile like an eggshell, broken open, oozes unrestrained like a liquefied scream. A race to fill cracks and crevices whips quickly across sullen floorboards. Desperate search for unattainable wholeness in the fetid dank vacuum of a space that proffers no gentle companionship on the journey to pernicious perdition. Just a middle passage from here to where fear lurks in dark corners, waiting. That's it. And so that speaks a little bit to, you know, how we got here. Let me tell you a little bit of a, little bit of a story about what happened since we've been here. And so I am the child of Jamaican immigrants, both sides, all the way back, first generation Canadian. How many people in the room are immigrants or children of immigrants? Go ahead, throw your hands in the sky. Look around, folks. It's the majority of the room. And let me tell you something that immigrants and children of immigrants hate to hear. It's this one particular question that really sticks in the craw. You know the question I'm talking about? Where are you from? No, 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 let me ask that again. I said, where are you from? Because black folks are definitely not Johnny come lately. Our contributions are critical, central, and stately. When Champlain claimed New France for the Gaul with the crown, who did he have with him to guide him around but Matthew da Costa, who knew the lay of the land and the languages spoken, we know he could understand. But how would he know them unless he got here before the man credited with breaking new ground in our lore? The sheer gall with which power tries to silence, suppress the pain and the triumphs of my people. I guess time is now I say something and make myself clear. My home is here. <laughs> East York was the place where my life began at Toronto East General Hospital by the capable hands of a Polish-born doctor who had a daughter the same age. He and my Jamaican mom watched as both children were raised in a well, both people were, oh, sorry. <laughs> wow, how did I lose that? Sorry. As both children were raised, oh my gosh, I just dropped the poem. Dear God, I'm so sorry. Woo! I got so excited. I got so excited. By people who came to Canada for hope and a chance that their kids would develop the means to advance and have impact and blaze a path curtain in snow in a land where my blackness at 20 below shivers shaking in shelters to go fight for my due. But now I plow ahead knowing what all of us knew. This nation was snatched from indigenous hands and built by their blood at oppression's commands. Disenfranchised, ignored, and whitewashed to submit to the dominant power of the French and the Brits all the way to today. And the rest benefit from the theft of a livelihood we won't admit provides their foundations for an immigrant preserve while original peoples live. Third world on reserves. Now take a walk around downtown Halifax. There's black people there, injured centuries of viciousness, violence, despair, oppressed by their neighbors and the governments of the day. Did you think that those memories would simply fade away? 
The Loyalists, Maroons, and Africville stains are notable due to overt glints of chains. Revisionists big as tried to gloss over those crimes of humanity held hostage by their odious designs. I remind all those people who think Canada's mosaic is anything but farcical, mythic, and prosaic that if you scatter a mess and then claim that it's beauty, to refuse to clean it up is dereliction of duty. When that's followed by attempts to cover up mistakes, how can we boldly assert that we're better than the states? I declare. Those who question my rights to this place, based solely on the color of my skin and my race, have been brainwashed to believe that our history is only white. And Laurier, King, and Trudeau Sr. held up right are the models our kids must be taught in our schools in the hope we adults are uncritical fools who revere that old leader who gave Smuts the idea to fleece black South Africans like Jason and Medea and build a golden oasis, an African sanctuary based on our racist Indian act. We've duped the unwary to believe King xenophobia and Trudeau Sr.'s false construction of a society that justly birthed racial hatred's destruction. That idea is so ingrained it's now treated as a fact that our nation is the world's promulgation of a pact that assures immigrant groups that their vices abroad can be stifled over here. Mm -mm. That perspective's a fraud. Black people here can tell you that racism's alive and encumbering restraints so that it's harder to thrive. So take heed and just step up and glibly succumb to the earth's apps of arrogance. Hey, where are you from? I'm born of this land and it's here that I remain. And the depths of my roots allow me to ascertain without doubt that this land of water, rocks, trees, and ice is exactly where I belong. My forebears paid the price so I could stand here and state with no shame and no fear. My home is here. Thank you. Thank you. So just, as, just before I step away, I just wanted to say thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. Thank you to the region and to all of you for being here and to the RMG for having this event. I also wanted to indicate that I'm also the artistic director of Black Lit Durham, and we have an event every other month at the St. Francis Center in Pickering Village, and on the Sunday, the 26th of February, we're having another show paying respect to our Black Canadian Lit elders. Please join us there on the 26th from 7 to 9. Thank you so much. Not sure you cleared plugging another event with me, but that's fine. Thank you. Sorry. Appreciate it. Uh, one more time for Greg Frankson, everybody. So uh, I understand there's another uh, politician has joined us. Councillor Rick Kerr is in the house somewhere. Councillor Kerr, thank you for being here. You can clap for Councillor Kerr. It's all good. And one of the more newly elected trustees for Durham District School Board, Stevie Linton, is in the house too. Stevie? Get up yourself, man. That's a big deal. Stretching. All right. Um, Want to bring up the next poet for the evening, Nadine Williams. Probably not a stranger to most of you in the room. A multi-award winning poet, author, and arts educator, Nadine Williams is a Jamaican-Canadian who has published three collections of poetry, two children's books, and over 14 volumes of literature. These creations are a staple in the curricula of several schools in Canada in celebration of black history. She's a regular presenter at schools across Canada and was the distinguished guest speaker to the prestigious African Writers Club at the University of Vienna in May 2019. She is the recipient of the York Regional Police Deeds Speak Award in 2014. She received parliamentary mention for significant contribution to black history in Canada in 2019 as when, and was recently named among the 100 accomplished black Canadian women in 2022. And then in January of 2022, she received an invitation to exhibit her work at the Art Gallery of Mississauga. Ladies and gentlemen, Nadine Williams. Thank you, good evening everyone. Such a huge honor to be here with you guys this, uh, this afternoon. I made sure I jumped on the 407 from Brampton because I wanted to make sure I was here on time. Let me tell you, I, there's something about that, you know. Um, 
Uh, every time I'm introduced to a new audience, I like to share a bit of a biographical piece of poetry called The Immigrant Child. I will ask that you hold any applause that you may afford me until the very end, because I want to make sure I maximize my time. Uh, the Immigrant Child. I am the immigrant child. Born and bred on the fingers of bananas, backs of chickens, hearts of breadfruits, livers, tripes, and kidneys of cows. The immigrant child whose forefathers hoarded their monies or through what they called pardnas to ensure that on September mornings there would be no bawling since I, like the rest, could stand with the best and big up my chest and proudly tell the teachers good morning. Yes, I am the immigrant child whose very large family shared two bedrooms and one veranda who fumbled with bottle torches at nights to find the toilets. And though I may reside in four and five bedroom houses with en-suites attached, you know, there was a time when I had roofs that were thatched and patched to keep the waters at bay. Hey, hear me when I say, I am the immigrant child who has embarked upon a land of promise, a land foretold many years ago, a land where milk and honey flows. The immigrant child whose migration and subsequent integration has made me a proud Canadian, entitled to all that the shores of Nova Scotia, Manitoba, British Columbia, Newfoundland and Labrador has in store, as much sap as my tongue can lap from the bark of the maple trees while mastering as many degrees as my tuition fees deems feasible. I am the immigrant child, destined to fulfill the goodwill of those that sent me, those who themselves knew not this land of promise. I am the immigrant child whose rich heritage oozes from my pores as I try to ensure that the doors of these great memories are open wide to impart a sense of humility and pride while being a guide to this generation and the generations after this. I am the immigrant child born and bred on the fingers of bananas, backs of chickens, hearts of breadfruits, livers, tripes, and kidneys of cows. And I am the immigrant child who will die humbly holding dear the heart of the breadfruit, the immigrant child. I'm going to read a series of poems taken from my Black History Month collection, and then I will get to the one um, that actually brought me here today. Rooted. We belong. Although our roots were uprooted there, causing many to wither along the route, we have been transplanted here, taking root despite the shock, growing strong and thick, sorry, growing strong and thick, spreading our limbs far and wide. Harsh though the climate be, we are not simply surviving, but thriving. Whether doing great things near the Great Lakes or baking up a storm while Weathering the storm as far away as Baker Lake, up and about in Sault Ste. Marie, around town in St. Therese, or settling down in St. Thomas, we belong. We are strong. We are rooted. We are home. We're free to grow. High rise. Black futures are high rises we build, looking back at high res picks from the blacks who built. We have stellar picks of blueprints and must hold them dear to our hearts. My dears, they are the armor against fingerprints and holding cells facilitated by our women and men in blue. Our cells, derived from the DNA of our ancestors, cry out for us to be ourselves while exuding the black joy that emanates when we catch a glimpse of our brilliant black futures. The path to million dollar listings on the bridal path and sweet penthouse suites requires a glimpse of the past every now and then. It is there where we see clearly the need to deconstruct the notion of fast lives and fast cash and reconstruct our minds, cashing in at will on our brilliant black futures. With walls shored up, utilizing the various skills found through higher education, skilled trades, or innovation. Sure enough, no matter our pigmentation, our structures can 
and will rise. It does take time. Even if your preference is a low rise, I tell you, no lies. For our structures to stand the test of time, take your time and meticulously build. Lend your skills to those in need, borrow and return tools when the need arises. Each time we rise, whether from rest or a fall, be it in summer, winter or fall, whenever the build gets arduous, as it inevitably will, take a glimpse of the high-res pics from those blacks who built our brilliant black futures. I'm here today because of the fabric of our being, my 2017 Black History Month poster that was written in celebration of the International Decade for people of African descent as well as Canada 150. When I read the poem where you hear me say, Generation Strong, the original was 150 Strong. I became cognizant of the decade uh, somewhere in the fall of 2016. Actually, I lie. The summer of 2016, I was promoting my poem, The Immigrant Child, uh, selling it on canvas. And I, uh, because of the high price that it is, I visited people in person, you know, to show them a pretty smile. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and actually, maybe this is a good time to, to, to put in a plug. Hey, Cameron, as I show me pretty smile. The poems I'm reading, they're upstairs, actually, displayed on canvas. So I visited Mark down, um, he's with RBC, one of the executives there, and I, he invited me to a lunch meeting, RBC Tower in Mississauga. And, you know, I read him, The Immigrant Child, I already knew he was a fan, and may I try to sell him the poem, you know? I'm trying to sell him the poem. And, <laughs> and he says to me, you know, Nadine, what's really important to the bank is the fact that, you know, we're celebrating, uh, next year we're going to be celebrating, you know, Canada 150. And it's important that, that, that people know that black people, we're not newcomers, that we've been here for a while. Needless to say, he never really did buy the, the canvas, you know, he never bought the canvas. But he gave me so much more when he dropped those nuggets in my head. And I sat right there and wrote my poem. I was that was my inspiration and the theme for my Black History Month the, the next year. I make a tell you something. Let me tell you something. It has just like, it was kind of slow in a way, Stan. Hey, Stan. Uh, is Stan still there? Where is he? It was a little slow, I, hey, I had lots and lots of meetings and meetings and all kinds of meetings. So what made me decide? So, you know, Black History Month come and then it goes on. You have a theme and you move on and, you know, and I have a whole heap of them. So I have 15 of them actually. So I had moved on, you know, but what I found that whole year when I read the poem, nobody in the audiences could say they had heard of the international decade for people of African descent. And we were already, that was 2016 or 2017, we were like two years in, right? Um, so I decided the following year in 2018, because I'm always looking for projects to do in the summer because I work in schools, something to keep going, right? And so... What made me keep going in 2018 was a, a tweet that, oh, so sorry, let me back up a little bit. Uh, the UN had recognized the work that I was doing in promoting the decade, so they had been inviting me down to the headquarters in New York uh, to, for different celebratory events. So I became very cognizant of the acronym IDPAD, International Decade People of African Descent. The federal government recognized the decade the January of 2018. Thanks to a small part in the advocacy work that I did, and then in the spring, I saw a tweet come out of Ottawa where the federal government was earmarking $9 million for black youth um, mental health in support of DPAD is what they called it. So I thought to myself, I want EMD pad. I thought it was IDPAD. So I thought, you know, if the federal government still isn't even getting it right, there needs to be more work. So I decided to resurrect my poster and turn it, and turn it into an actual art installation, you know, I hope to see it in like a space like this, when I look around the room, you know, it'd be nice, anyways, um, so, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there and I was thinking, no, you zip it, so, um, so I'm zipping it, kind of, sort of, so, um, I decided to resurrect it and, and uh, install it in airports across Canada, that was my big idea, and I started making all sorts of random phone calls, meetings here, there, and everywhere, because, you know, it costs some money to get it going, and Edmonton Airport was the first airport that said yes. Yay, Edmonton. All right. <laughs> and the Edmont I worked with the Edmonton School Board to realize that um, installation, and so, um, just to talk really fast, we're up to about between the original poem and this one, we're at about 200 installations, and I aim to get to 1,000, so to all the listening ears around here. Mostly, <laughs> 
Most of them are done in schools. And this one we're looking at here, um, I borrowed from St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. They were generous enough to loan it to me because right here in Durham, the Durham Regional Police Youth in Policing, they're in the process I just presented to them for them to create their very own quilt. Yes. And I am very much an artist. I come up with the concept and the ideas, but I am no quilter, let me tell you. And our amazing quilters are in the room, Carol and Michelle. Hey. <laughs> All right, so the poem is called The Fabric of Our Being. I'm going to talk really fast, and then you guys have intermission and meet me upstairs. Tightly woven. No, no intermission, no intermission. Uh, MMC program center, no intermission. After I think done, we talk upstairs. Uh, tightly woven. <laughs> Tightly woven into Canada's fabric, generation strong. Yes, we've been here all along. Certainly not of our own free will, but in search of freedom song. Not newcomers on the fringes as some would have us believe. Look closer to the center if you please. You will see us living the Canadian dream, once a nightmare to our ancestral stream. Crossing many rivers, valleys, and streams, we've come a mighty long way. Though it's been a hard road to travel, we will not unravel, but will revel in the beauty and multicultural fabric of our home and native land. Generation strong, you best believe we've been here all along, the fabric of our being. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, Nadine.